What's up my fellow print on demand sellers in this video I want to show you how for one dollar you can break down all barriers and basically remove all excuses for not being successful as a print on demand seller because creative fabric has got just about everything you need plus 10,000 times more I mean the, the amount of resources on their website is ridiculous and in this video I want to show you five of my favorite uses for creative fabrica that you can take full advantage of for just one dollar and you guessed it the link to my special landing page is in the description and I'm gonna explain it to you in just a second but just so you know you get it for a dollar and then you save 35 percent on the monthly recurring fees so it's a really great deal that's available right now and I wanted to let you guys know about it so let's get started Amongst other things, when you sign up for Creative Fabrica, you get access to over 80,000 different fonts, which is so many more than you'll ever need. I just keep a short list of my favorite fonts, honestly, on uh, my Google Keep, which is like my online notes. And they have access to like over 4 million graphics. And like I said, I'm gonna show you five ways that I like to utilize Creative Fabrica in this video. But first, let me just show you what is essentially the deal they're running right now. It's $1 for everything you need and it's one dollar for the first month you're probably wondering there's got to be a catch right yes normally uh it renews at i think 29 dollars uh forgive me if my math is wrong but essentially if you use my link it'll renew at 19 dollars per month after that which is a 35 percent discount if i could do the math in my head i'd figure out 19 and then what is that 35 percent discount what would it be it's either 27 or 29 i think um so it's a great deal right now you get full access to all the resources with no limits when you sign up you get commercial use rights on all the resources and you can cancel anytime with no obligations so as promised now I want to walk you through how I use creative fabrica so the first thing I wanted to show you is how you can use them for mock-ups and in this example I looked up mug mock-up and they have a ton they've even got mug mock-ups specifically for Easter so it's like what do you know we've got Easter coming up and uh, you know we got the Easter Bunny posing with the mug mock-up itself uh, what more could we want guys so i went ahead and i grabbed a few of these mug mock-ups i grabbed well i want to show you the two that i grabbed so the first one i grabbed is a pretty generic standard white mug mock-up you can see it here behind me and um here's the thing we need a design to put on this mock-up but i just wanted to show you that hey we've got a nice blank canvas here uh this mock-up i'd probably crop before i used it on any of my online stores and um this video let's just say we're doing a kind of a broad video where hey maybe you sell on shopify Maybe you sell on Etsy. Uh, it doesn't really matter where you sell. If you have the ability to upload your own mockups, then it's going to be beneficial to you. It's going to increase your click through rate if you use it as a primary image and your conversion rate if you add additional images and it's not your primary of really sharp looking mockups. So I grabbed two that I liked. Um, I like them more than the Easter Bunny mockups, honestly. So I've got these two mockups. And let, let me show you how the mockup's going to look after we grab a graphic that we can easily utilize with our mockups. Now, Graphic design is not something that I am great at. So you know what? I, I'm very open about this. I like to outsource it to the people that are better than me. And there's no easier way than doing that than to come to a place like Creative Fabrica where they've got, what did I say? Like over four, I think it was like 4.6 million graphics as of recording this. So yeah, they got what you need. I don't even need to ask what it is you need. They've got it. Um, I looked up Easter graphic and liked this, um, you know, I, I've, I've been open about the fact that I like graphics and I like to pair graphics with text. For some reason, I think that that converts really well on shirts and I like to prioritize shirts. So I'll optimize my designs for shirts and then I'll just take the design and put it on a mug. So I'm going to take this design and I don't need to really do anything, right? I just click this nice big download button and I just so happen to have already done that. So I've got this design sitting right here and I can just come on over here to Photoshop uh, where's our mug mockups? And I can just kind of drag and drop it into the mockup here, <clears throat> resize it a little bit, and boom. You know, and we've got a great looking mug mockup right here. Now, you might want to look for a black mug mockup for this. You can also do some tweaks like maybe right click, blending options, do a stroke, and maybe make it a little bit thicker. So you could do something like that as well. Uh, and you know there's no rules really this could this will print just fine onto a mug um depending on if you want to sell it you could order a sample if you don't believe me but it's really just that simple to create an outstanding looking mug mock-up with a design that took us 10 seconds to download because you just click the download button extract the file drag drop and you're done now i wanted to show you something else that's pretty cool that maybe you guys know of maybe you didn't um but i want to show you how to do this and maybe make some couples mugs okay 
And my goal here is to show you something that maybe you hadn't seen before. So I'm going to zoom in really quickly because I would definitely crop this, uh, the end result of these mockups um, before posting. Because I, like I like to really put the focus on the product and the design. I don't care about all the extra, you know, empty space. Just my personal preference. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing here on the uh, design. And I will apply a stroke. I think that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to right click and duplicate this layer and move it onto the other mug. Okay. So it's kind of like his and hers couples mugs or whoever hers and hers, his and his, whatever. And here's the thing. You can take the design and you can just kind of alter the color scheme and potentially sell a mug bundle where it's not just, you know, a clone of the original. So in Photoshop, and you can do this in Photopea, uh, as well, you can probably do it in Illustrator very similarly. I'm a creature of habit. I love Photoshop. I go to image, then I go to adjustments, then I go to hue slash saturation. And here I can just kind of play with the color slider and notice it's like changing the color scheme of the mug uh, or of the design that I overlaid on the second mug. So it's again, it's like we're not really doing much here. We're just letting Photoshop kind of algorithmically tweak the colors. And now we've got, you know, a set of mugs. <laughs> using the same graphic and just kind of tw easily tweaking the color scheme. So not too bad, right? And you can upload this to Etsy and sell mug bundles. The next thing I wanted to show you is that you can use Creative Fabrica to get cut files for the Cricut and similar cutting machines. Now, I have a funny quick story, but uh, earlier this week, I had one of my subscribers who, um, shout out to Adam, who actually did like a FaceTime with me and called me and said, yo, you don't understand how these things work. Let me show you. Because I have bought one for my girlfriend and I haven't honestly watched her use it. And I had really a misunderstanding of how these things worked, but it's really cool. I'm not the one that uses them. Marielle, my girlfriend, she uses them for the Cricut machine that I got her. And I may be upgrading it uh, based on, you know, Adam's recommendation. Uh, he's running, by the way, he runs multiple Etsy shops, runs sticker businesses out of his Etsy shop. And uh, he, you know, he's got some designers that he pays that do a great job, but he could also be utilizing Creative Fabrica. I haven't asked him, but they're only one click away. And I went ahead and downloaded a file already right here. And just to show you, um, you get them in a bunch of different file formats and you can feed them right into your software for whatever cutting machine you're using. And it should be very easy to utilize. As mentioned earlier, Creative Fabrica has a massive font library. Like massive doesn't even do justice to how big the font library is. So I just searched for Easter font and there's a ton of of options behind me of fonts that you may want to utilize it also mixes in some like pre-made designs and whatnot uh but the fonts i mean it just goes on forever so you can you can scroll literally for days and they've got a tool in here while it's on my mind called font cloud i had highlighted it in a previous video but it essentially allows you to store your favorite fonts you don't have to you don't have to put everything up um essentially in the cloud and then when they're there you can jump on over to the font cloud and it will render text in your fonts so that instead of you having to memorize what the fonts look like, go to the font cloud and just look, they're all there and they're being applied in real time. And you can upload essentially as a backup, uh, all of your favorite font files to creative Fabrica. But I wanted to show you, like I went ahead and I grabbed this Easter font file. It's got the uh, rabbits in the text and um, you know, it's, I'm not a huge fan. Like I don't know how to utilize these types of fonts. It, again, I'm not a strong designer. I went ahead and downloaded it cause it looked cool. And if I wanted to go create an Easter themed shirt, you know how I like to say you can do text only designs. Well, this is almost like cheating because you can create text only designs where the font itself that you're typing is more than just letters, right? It's got the designs kind of cooked into the letters themselves. So really cool, big potential. And again, one click away. Last, I wanted to show you how you can utilize their shape cloud tool to create unique designs that you really don't have to worry about anybody trying to copy you because most people don't know how to make these style designs. I guess I'll just show you a quick preview of what I mean. Uh, right here behind me, you can see I made an Easter themed shape cloud and I can actually show you what it looks like over the um, t-shirt mock-up that I keep handy as well. And also I forgot to show you, I made like a happy Easter shirt mock-up as well. Cause I just kind of keep a blank screenshot of the merch by Amazon shirt on my computer in case I need it for videos or whatnot. So here you go. Shape cloud guys. I'm going to show you how to do this really quickly. Uh, first you're going to need an SVG graphic. If you want to do a custom shape. Now it does come preloaded with a ton of different shapes. They've actually got categories as well. Um, wedding shapes, nature shapes, basic, misc, nature. Um, they got a bunch, but I like to use custom shapes typically. So I came to Creative Fabrica, of course, they have everything. And I searched for Easter egg SVG. Now you don't have to be too picky because it's going to essentially translate the solid object, uh, SVG, you know, graphic object 
into your word cloud. But if you were to select one like the one behind me here, which is a bunch of lines, uh, instead of a solid object, you might have some trouble with the word cloud. So I went ahead and I just grabbed um, this shape right here. And it could have been any, like again, the design doesn't matter because that's going to kind of disappear. Uh, we really are just kind of letting it utilize the, the shape, the object itself. So then I go over here to the shape cloud and we can even restart from scratch. So I will reload the page. If you don't believe me how easy this is to do, I'm about to show you. So the first thing you can see it, it preloads it with um, a design of like a face and it has default words, shape cloud, crafters, design, fabrica, creative. I'm going to delete all the default words. Now I'm making an Easter design. So either I can come up with my own Easter words or, you know, you can go to Google and just type in Easter words like I did right here. And I've got a bunch of good suggestions and uh, I don't think you can copy paste. I think you have to type them in like one by one. So why don't we type in, you know, April, Easter, Jesus, bunny, rabbit, candy, um, miracle. I think those were a lot of the words I saw here. Easter basket and type in basket and type in eggs. Okay. So we got, what is that? Nine different words. Guys, I can't wait for you to see how easy this is. Nine different words in there. Now we go to upload shape and I noticed that when you click upload shape, it looks like nothing happens. I think one of their web developers, shout out to the web developers, by the way, as a former web developer for eight years, um, this seems a little bit broken where you have to scroll down below the canvas to see where you upload. I think it's supposed to be an overlay, but something's missing. So then you click to select file and I've already got the SVG file downloaded that I um, had grabbed earlier. So you can see right here. So I'm just going to double click that. By the way, if anybody's wondering how I have thumbnails on my SVG files, you can actually uh, do that in Windows if you Google it. There's something called, I think, Windows Power Tools or something. So I had to install it, and now I get thumbnails on my SVGs, which is really nice for a SVG digital file business on Etsy, which is also possible. Um, so here we go. I've got the Easter egg shape, and it automatically updated. It's got my custom words in there. Uh, I wonder if we can select the biggest words. So when I was tinkering with my demo, uh, I had the word Easter as the biggest word and it looked really cool, but now they've got April as the biggest. Oh, it's because I put April first. That's my bad. So I'm going to click out of April over here and then I'm going to re-add it. So now Easter's first and watch what ha happens when I click update changes. I'll bet you Easter is going to be the biggest word. Don't ask how I know. I'm assuming it's going to, otherwise I'm going to look dumb. All right, there we go. Easter's the biggest word. Perfect. So you can actually assign precedent uh, precedence in the order you um, enter those keywords in. So we've already uploaded the shape. And uh, that's for the shapes. You can select your font down here. I actually really like the Pacifico, like the default option, but you can play around with other ones. Um, maybe we'll try the cookie font. And then you can also select colors down here as well. You can do single colors or you're probably going to like the uh, color schemes. The one that I was using earlier, it may not look good against a white backdrop, but it looks really good when you um, upload it. So I believe it was bird folio blues. So I'm going to hit update changes. And it's going to take a couple seconds to work. Once it's done, you can just click download design. And uh, so check that out. You can just click download design. And again, because the pop-up's broken, you have to go ahead down here and click save as PNG. Uh, for demo purposes, I'm just going to copy it and probably just paste it into a new file and remove the background color so that I essentially get the PNG. And now I will just put it on top of this merch mock-up that I've got. I'm doing this, you know, I wouldn't do this in, in a real, um, for a real design, but I'm just showing you so it's quick for the uh, the demo purpose. So then I've got it overlaid on a shirt. And how about that, guys? Uh, it's customizable beyond this, by the way. Um, you can really just get in here, tinker, play around. But these word clouds, customers love them. People love them. And it's a really unique way. And it's not, I mean, it's not unique in the sense that you're not going to be the only person doing it. But I know a bunch of people that use Creative Fabrica, love the Shape Cloud tool. And when I did videos on this in the past, they were like, oh man, you're letting my best secret go. <laughs> you're, you're telling everybody that, you know, how easy it is to make these Shape Clouds, guys. Because before I knew how to do it, I thought they were extremely hard and impressive uh, as well. And I just assumed some, you know, black belt level uh, graphic designer was out there slaving away all day at them. But it turns out, you know, you can just let software do it for you. Uh, so guys, that's what I wanted to cover in today's video check out Creative Fabrica. I've got a link at the top of the description. You're not going to find a better deal than this. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and I'll get back to you. But guys, thank you for watching. Please like, please subscribe, please check out Creative Fabrica and I'll see you soon with a new video.